Pull your money out now as investors are facing more bankruptcies, more frozen accounts, and even accusations of a Ponzi scheme. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And for the past several weeks, we've been warning crypto investors that their situation is only going to get worse as more accounts are going to get frozen and more companies are going to face bankruptcy. And sure enough, it's happening. We've also been warning this is going to spill over to other markets, and we're already now seeing just beginning of where this can go. Let's head over to Bloomberg where we pick up today's story that another crypto lender vault pauses withdrawals as market crash takes its toll. Vault CEO said in a blog post on Monday that the company is facing financial challenges due to volatile market conditions. The financial difficulties are a key business partner and inevitably affecting us in the current market climate, which has led customers to withdrawing more than $197.7 million from the platform since mid-June. The Singapore-based company said it's working with its financial and legal advisors to explore all and analyze all possible options, including potential restructuring options that would best protect the interests of all stakeholders. And this is something, as a depositor, as an investor in this company, you do not want Want to hear this this is bad news they're telling you things are going to get worse if we can't shore up our financial situation let's continue on because vaults move to halt withdrawals comes less than three weeks after the ceo said the company continues to operate as usual despite volatile market conditions well three weeks and now that's all gone and june 16th blog post the ceo said withdrawals were being processed as usual as will continue to be the case in the future and what happens here is the crypto space you're seeing what these companies are having problems with their money and what they do is this is no different than the commercial banking system or any banking system they take in depositors money and then they lend it out or they buy collateral now if your collateral goes bad that's a problem or if the loan you put out goes bad also a problem and what we're seeing is the business decisions these firms made with depositors money weren't good the market crashes exposed flaws in a number of cryptocurrency projects and business models in may algorithmic stablecoin terra usd which we covered collapsed taking down its sister token luna meanwhile major cryptocurrency hedge fund three arrows capital which we've also covered fell into liquidation after defaulting on more than 660 million dollar loan from voyager digital and speaking of three arrows as we talked about back then it was going to have more contagion risk we were going to find out that more and more firms Firms are going to step and say, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got some exposure to that, and it only gets worse. Crypto lender Genesis now confirms exposure to bankrupt Three Arrows Capital as Genesis sold collateral and hedged its own downside, which was smart, once Three Arrows failed to meet a margin call, according to the CEO of Genesis in a recent series of tweets. The loans to Three Arrows have a weighted average margin requirement of over 80%, he said, without disclosing the total loan amount, because they don't want you to know. If you did, you'd probably panic even more than you are now. The full extent of the impact of three arrows on the industry is starting to emerge as more crypto lenders and brokers disclose exposure to the fund's bad debt. Three arrows capital is set for liquidation ordered by British Virgin Islands Court, as we recently talked about, and is filed for Chapter 15 bankruptcy protection in New York. Blockchain.com and Deribit, a crypto derivatives exchange, were among creditors that sought the liquidation of three arrows. And Coindesk earlier reported that Genesis is subject to potential losses of hundreds of millions of dollars, in part due to exposure to three arrows in Babel Finance. It has a Hong Kong-based crypto lender that has halted withdrawals, as we've covered, citing people it didn't identify. And so if, the, if word got out that how much Genesis was losing, people would start pulling money there. And this is what happens when people lose confidence of those who are holding their money, whether it's the commercial banking system or in the crypto space, it doesn't matter. When confidence is lost, money goes, and then you find out that perhaps what you thought was money good actually isn't. But it gets worse because Celsius customers are now losing hope for their locked up crypto. And what some customers are learning the hard way is that crypto lenders might look and act like the traditional finance system, but they lack investor oversight and legal protections built into banks and brokerages. Notably, their deposits aren't guaranteed by the federal government. And what this really becomes is an issue of collateral. And of course, we know the commercial banking system. What is their collateral? Well, it's government-backed treasury securities or mortgage-backed 
tax securities, also backed by the government. You have a very deep, very liquid market. If things go wrong with a loan, you could sell your collateral. Well, what we're learning in the crypto space is some of the collateral they use wasn't money good. They used other coins, stable coins that they thought were as good as treasuries. And what we're finding out is a lot of this stuff isn't what people thought. And that means money is going to be lost and likely permanently. And crypto lender Celsius accused of being a Ponzi scheme, if you can imagine that, as Celsius amassed more than $20 billion in assets by offering interest rates as high as 18% to customers who deposited their cryptocurrencies. And again, this is where we talk about this collateral issue. There was so much opportunity for them to lend money out. They offered people 18%. Hey, give us your money. We'll pay you an 18% return, which is huge. And then they lent the money out. Now, if they're, lend if they're paying 18, that means they have to be getting more from from someone else. And of course, when you're lending out at rates that high, the risk of default starts to get really high. Those defaults happen. All the people thought they were getting a great return on their investment are now finding out they might not even have their investment anymore. The founder of, of course, Celsius had dismissed dismissed any skepticism about whether that was sustainable, saying the company was able to earn high rates itself. Well, doesn't look like it. But Celsius, in fact, was struggling to cover the past and suffered secure exchange, severe exchange rate loss. Of course, sounds like a Ponzi scheme due to the fluctuating values of different coins, according to a complaint filed Thursday in New York State by Kefi, the company founded by the former money manager, Jason Stone. And Celsius customers have been unable to access their funds since June 12th. The company said on June 30th is considering restructuring its debts. Of course, that is exactly what you would hear from something that sounds like a Ponzi scheme. More than a million people entrusted their savings to Celsius, according to the company. The appeal was obvious. The rates had paid were tens or hundreds of times higher than traditional savings accounts. And behind the scenes, Celsius was investing customer funds in risky trading strategies without proper controls, according to the lawsuit. Starting in August 2020, Celsius started transferring hundreds of millions of dollars to Stone's company, Kefi. And all this has led is for people to wonder if perhaps this is the end. Am I done with crypto? Voyager bankruptcy rocks. True believers. And this is a broken system that this type of downside risk can be pretty brutal, according to the director of research at FBB Capital. In some ways, when investors suffer these kind of losses, similar to when a bond goes to zero, it can feel like the system is broken. In this case, investors may believe an impression that the system has failed, leading to a desire to get out. And of course, that is the mistake a lot of investors make about their portfolio. Maybe not in this case with the crypto space, but when markets go down, people run. Rather than that, what they should be doing is investing in a strategy that hedges their risk, has a potential to go up when markets crash. And that's Portfolio Shield. I'll put a link up here in the corner and in the description below. And now let's talk about how this crypto issue is now starting to flood into other markets as the Fed continues to tighten. Because I said it wouldn't be limited there it would leak into other markets. Well, now we're going to see some other money about to go bad. As Bloomberg headlines, historic cascade of defaults is coming from for emerging markets, a place where a lot of investors have flooded money in, as you guessed, to get a return. A quarter trillion dollar pile of distressed debt is threatening to drag the developing world into a historic cascade of defaults. Sri Lanka was the first nation to stop paying its foreign bondholders this year, burdened by the unwieldy food and fuel costs the stoke protests and political chaos. Russia followed in June after getting caught in a web of sanctions. And now the focus is turning to El Salvador, Ghana, Egypt, Tunisia, and Pakistan, nations that Bloomberg Economics sees as vulnerable to default. As a cost to ensure emerging markets his debt from non-payment surges to the highest since Russia invaded Ukraine. Concerns also coming from the likes of World Bank chief economist Carmen Reinhart, and this is only going to get worse as the number of emerging markets with sovereign debt that trades at distressed level yields it indicate investors believe default is a real possibility. It's more than doubled in the past six months, according to the data compiled from Bloomberg Index. Collectively, these 19 nations are home to more than 900 million people, and some, such as Sri Lanka and Lebanon, are already in default. And of course, how much money is at risk, you ask? Well, a lot. At stake, this is 237 billion due to foreign bondholders and notes that are trading in distress that up, add up to almost a fifth, or about 17% of the 1.4 trillion emerging market sovereigns that have outstanding external debt denominated in dollars, euros, yen, or yen, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. And that's money in people's portfolios and people's 401k and money that went there because of all this belief that inflation would spiral out of control and people look for a place to earn a yield. Just 
just like they did in the crypto space they looked at the emerging markets and of course now we can see that sector is heading lower but what is the culprit of all this well it's a dollar shortage as we now head over to zero hedge at headlines china's foreign currency reserve unexpectedly plunged 56 billion to a two-year low hint at significant bitcoin upside well i'm not sure about the second part but anyways two months later we are well on our way there because china revealed overnight the country's foreign exchange reserves plunged far more than expected in june as the dollar climbed against other major currencies fueled by aggressive u.s interest rate hikes and the yuan tumbled the country's foreign exchange reserves the world's largest fell 56.5 billion to 3.071 trillion last month compared with 3.111 trillion in consensus expectations now while you'll hear a lot of reasons for this well there's only one voice we should listen to and that's my friend jeff snyder an expert of course in global macroeconomics and of course the euro dollar system which is all connected together let's head over to jeff's daily brief where we see according today for those of you who are on the subscriber list global data in china he interprets this as that china still enjoys a massive merchandise surplus even as the global economy slows down in 2022 this means that via commercial channels china as a whole should be experiencing dramatic maybe even historic levels of primarily u.s dollar inflows which can then end up in some official hands either safe or the pboc or both we already suspect to more than a reasonable degree that for however much of the merchandise surplus puts dollars in China on net, financial flows, real prospects for a global dollar shortage must be more than canceling them out. Since the trade surplus is at and near record levels, this indicates nothing good about the hidden euro dollar deficit. And all that means is there's a massive dollar shortage. That's what's impacting crypto. That's what is impacting emerging markets and that's what's going to impact even more of the broad market with the major u.s equity indices the last to fall if you want to get just reports well they're free sign up for market insiders pro there's a link in the description below and again limited time offer it will be free but you can get that report five days a week and next one coming on monday i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now